You invest everything into those relationships and they become way more intense. Oh, hey, what's up, Jeff? All right, man. Long time no see. How's it going? How's everything yeah. going? Oh, these good, good. My friend Colin and okay, Sierra, by the way. Good to meet you. What's happening, Colin? Sure, sounds good. All right, take care. Good seeing you. All right, so that was my old boss. Yeah? Yeah, so I quit his job <laughs> to go traveling. <laughs> Do it. That's it. Stop thinking about it. Just do it. This is Mike. I first met Mike when I was 12 years old. Here's us at band practice in November 2001. And here's us in his apartment in December 2016. That's the face I made when Mike told me he left his job. I know what that means. I'm not the guy who would quit his job and travel around the world. But Mike is that guy, and he did it, twice. And it looks like he's about to do it again. I don't know what to do. Yeah, you'll be fine. Like once the travel bug hits, the travel bug hits. When the travel bug hits Mike, it's not what you think. He's not planning a long weekend in Palm Springs or Vegas. He's talking about a one-way ticket and leaving everything behind. He's a tough guy to lock down. Slovenia, Croatia, other places in the Balkans, back to Spain for a little while and went like all around Spain and Portugal. But since he is here in LA, we thought we would sit him down and talk to him about travel. Whoa, one word, huh? You're not a man of one word, man. <laughs> Hold on, let me, let me backtrack here. Let me, let me like really think about these trips. Um... All right, so one word may have been asking too much. So let's talk about where this all started. First time I ever left the country, was when I went to Australia to study abroad during college. I'd never left the country before that. I didn't really know what it was all about. Once I started working, I worked for about two years and then realized I kind of had this itch. Like I was 24, 25. I felt like I needed an adrenaline rush in my life. And the first thing that came to mind was traveling. I always wanted to just like take three months, travel abroad with no plan, no expectations, with no one I know. So I did it, pulled the trigger. Let's take a look at what Mike actually did. The first time he quit his job to travel was in June of 2014. I told him if he did that, I'd meet him somewhere along the way. For the first trip, I started in Tel Aviv. Copenhagen, Stockholm, London, Berlin, Krakow, Vienna, Dubrovnik, Havar, Budapest, Barcelona. And that's when I got there. We started in Barcelona, took two buses to Basque Country, stayed with this guy in San Sebastian, went to a parade that got really out of hand, took a train to Biarritz, walked down the highway in France, and end up at this concert in Bordeaux. All of that in 10 days. After Bordeaux, I went back to LA, and Mike went to Amsterdam, Mykonos, Santorini, and Istanbul. What we didn't mention is that before Mike left, he started a blog called Currently Living. He wrote about his entire trip while he was traveling. Here's one of our favorite quotes. I started writing basically like in high school, I have this like vivid memory. One day in 11th grade, it was a creative writing class and I wrote something and then my teacher used it as an example. After class, she pulled me away and like told me that like she was really impressed by it. So that was like the first time I knew that there was something there like whether or not I wrote a lot before, that kind of like gave me a spark and gave me some confidence to start writing. If you go back to Currently Living, there is the manifesto page. And when I wrote that, that's when everything just came into focus for me. Like it was just blinders on and I saw like a vision. Whatever like the standard life cycle is that people think in America, um, I kind of saw that you could break away from that and be successful in different ways. If you quit your job or if you like try to do something different, you're not gonna fail. You're actually gonna open up a whole new world of possibilities. What Mike's saying is that being different or being unique equals new possibilities and a new definition of success. After his first trip, Mike came back to LA and got a job. But about a month in, the travel bug hit, and Mike asked me if I wanted to take a 10-day trip to Colombia. We flew into Medellin and met friends on the first night. They gave us this weird local fruit called a carambolo, spent three days in the jungle, and ended up on top of this place called there the Big go. Rock. <laughs> Before heading back, we finished the trip with salsa dancing in Bogota. So, we've both traveled with Mike. Let's see what Mike has to say about traveling with us. With Samir in Spain, we were both at a time in our lives where we were kind of like figuring things out and we were like confused about a lot of different things in life, whether it was like 
career or relationship or like direction, whatever it was, and we were kind of like on the same path. So we both felt that way. On the trip with you in Colombia, we were both working, wondering, is this the right path? And we kind of just wanted like to escape. So we were, we were happy where we were when me and you were traveling, but we were just like, we need a little jolt, a little 10 day escape. So we went to Colombia. A year after that trip with Colin, Mike quit his job for the second time and bought a one-way ticket to Copenhagen. More traveling and more writing. I started my second trip in Copenhagen. Berlin, Madrid, Granada, Seville, Barcelona, Lisbon, Lagos, Paris, Lyon, Budapest, Vienna. Let's just stick with Altmunster because I don't know if I can say Munden, dude. Or <laughs> like, if anyone's even gonna know what that is. Okay, hold on. Lake Bled? Oh shit, I don't know how to say that. It was towards the end of this second trip where Mike's writing gained some notoriety. He wrote an article that got published by Thought Catalog. That was kind of crazy because people from Australia and Europe and Asia, like literally all over the world, just started emailing me randomly out of the blue. Something like, wow, like I inspired them with my writing or like, hey, can I have advice? Like I'm really thinking about doing a trip like yours. Can you help me? It just floored me when I read these emails from like complete strangers. To be clear, that article was read by over 80,000 people. It's pretty funny, like after the second trip, I think my mindset completely changed. There was no going back to like what life was before. Now, of course we know not everyone can travel and we feel lucky to have both had the opportunity to travel with Mike. Right, let's figure this out. The greatest thing that we take from Mike is the idea that you don't need to change your physical location to feel the full effects of travel on your day-to-day -day life. Even though I'm physically in one place, my mindset's completely different. I make the effort to try more new things. I make the effort to try to meet as many new people as I can because that reminds me of traveling. So it like keeps that high going. When Mike is in LA, he gives himself rules. Rule number one. No TV after work. As relaxing as that can be, I think at this point in my life, I just want like, I want to meet as many people as I can. I want to do as many new things as I can. So like sitting at home watching TV doesn't get me anywhere. And rule number two. Trying to meet at least one new person a day or one new person a week. Not just a surface level like, hey, what's your name? What do you do for a living? It's like knowing like what their hopes are, what they dream of, like knowing them. The effects, according to Mike, can be as he says. I want to use life changing, but that's like, that's kind of intense. <laughs> we look forward to his next adventure and we'll try to visit him wherever he goes. Because we know what looks to us like Mike at home is really just Mike visiting. This was a film shot on Wednesday and over the last 15 years by Colin and Samir and Mike.